Hello everyone, I'm Jung Chol, the professor of the computer science at ITC and IDPP in Cambodia. Today I will show you how to set up SSH server using OpenSSH on CentOS. Okay, uh, this video has a two part. The first video will explain about the part one and part one has two steps. Step one, package installation and startup. Step two, SSH authentication. And the second video will explain about the part two. Part two has four steps. Step three, SSH port forwarding. Step four, X11 forwarding. Step five, SSH client tools. And step six, SSH access control. Okay, then let's start from step one. Step one, package installation and service startup. For the setup of SSH server, you need four packages. OpenSSH, SCFS, client, just OpenSSH, and OpenSSH server. If you install OpenSSH SCFS, this package will support the program related to X11 passports. Later, you will practice with me. And uh, OpenSSH client will install SSH as login, SSH add, as if this kind of the command. And OpenSSH will install SSH key generate, SSCP, SSH server will install the daemon of SSH. After completion of installation, this kind of package and the service startup using the command service and the process checking, port number checking and the enable registration and the testing ssh the username and ss server okay then let's uh, try okay at first checking the package okay i don't have so let's uh, try to install like this open ssh SSH server SSH client TNTS and uh, open SSH ask uh, pass ask pass okay for packages okay Okay, I'm complete to install these kind of packages. And after that, let's check the packages to be installed already. Open SSH. Okay, here now there are four packages. Second step, service start. SSH start like this. And after that, process checking. SSHD. So here you can find this process the demo already and after that port number checking SSH normally use port number 22 like this okay I'm successful and after that registration to the run level using the system peak SSH D on list check okay so now Number two, three, four, five support the startup of the SSH automatically. But uh, in my case, I uh, will ch uh, change level only to four off. Okay, then now only the number three and five will support the auto startup automatically. So now test home. In my case, there are this kind of users. So here, like a test like this, for example, Linux local host password. Oh, I'm sorry, Linux one two three four. Okay, now I'm successful to log in the username with the username. Linux. So now I'm successfully start the SSH server and the test also. 
Okay, then I finish step one. Okay, step two, SSH authentication. Before you start SSH authentication, you have to know the stack of SSH. SSH server has two layers for their service. First, SSH over TCP SSH transport layer protocol and layer four, SSH user authentication protocol and connection protocol. Normally, SSH transport layer focus on server authentication, confidentiality, integrity, and optionally the, uh, support the compression also. And SSH user authentication, this here, normally SSH try to authenticate the client to client users to the server using some of the method later, I will explain about this one. And uh, if the authentication is uh, successful, then SSH connection protocol. In this protocol layer, normally this layer support tunnel. And this tunnel normally can be come true using the logical channels. Later, I will explain also this one. Okay, at first, SSH transport protocol layers. Here, this kind of things happen first. Server authentication using server's public key. So, SSH server will transfer his the public key to client like this. And after that, if they are the successful to exchange their keys using these keys, maybe uh, will support the integrity, encryption, and optionally compression also. And SSH user authentications in this layer, there are four ways for users authentication: public key authentication, password authentication, and host-based authentication or more covers, but covers later I will explain about this one. So anyway here there are three but normally we don't use host based authentication because of the security weakness. So in this video just I will explain about password and public key authentication. If authentication is successful then SSH connection protocol layers. In this layer normally uh, between a server and the client try to make a secure channel using the tunnel. We call this one tunneling. In video, uh, the second video, I will explain about this the connection also. Okay, in SSH transport lay, uh, protocol layers, normally there are the four steps. First, identification string exchange first step second step algorithm negotiation and the third the end of key exchange and of that service request at first id string exchange in this step normally server and client client will exchange their information for the buzzer numbers we call this one id string second step algorithm negotiations client and server will exchange the information to include the algorithms about first the key exchange, second encryption, third and MAC, and the last compression. If they finish the uh, exchange of this kind of algorithm, then server and client will decide the key, and after that they will change these keys. We call this kind of keys master key. And if client finishes this kind of step, then we'll request the services. Here, service mean user authentication and connections. Okay, then the, let's start SSH authentication first. For the server authentication, SSH server will use this kind of keys. Here, RS and the key is what we call this private key, and RSA key pub is a public key. Also, DSA key is a private key, DSA key pub. So, SSH server will copy the public key and transfer this one to client for server authentication. And client, if client receive this kind of key from server, 
and client will save this information to uh, user's home directory slash dot ssh and non host so non host file will save this kind of the public key of server so if we want to see the, this kind of the process you can use this kind of option hyphen v v v v then you can see this kind of authentications and uh, for the user authentication uh, as as i told you before there are four ways password authentication public key and host based authentication covers covers maybe later i will make the video to explain the covers and uh, here even if there are four way but normally ssh use the three way especially the host based authentication ssh don't recommend to use this one because of the security weakness so in this video just i will explain about the password authentication and public authentication Especially, I already show you how to use the password authentication, just the password, like a teller and the other things. For the public authentication in the server, uh, this one needs three lines in main configuration file. So here, RS authentication, public authentication, yes, and the key file for public authentication will be authorize on the back keys and after that in the server you need to start ssh again client on client need to make a keys so to make a key you can use this kind of command ssh key generate minus t rsa or dsa minus v in the block size of the key so here I write down just the ones on 24. And after that, you need to copy this uh, key, especially the private uh, public key. So here and users home directory here and that SSC director name and also in the case is the name of the public key from client. And after that you can use the latest SSH username as a server. After you make you uh, kiss using the RSA or DSA, then you can use the SSA agent and SSH add. SSH agent and SSH add will provide a service to, to memorize or save your key to the memory. In this case, you can log in to the SSH server without the password. Okay, then let's try. Now I'm successful to install four packages. Okay, now let's go. Here, uh, I already told you about this one. SSH DSA key is a private key. SSH DSA key pub is a public key. SSH RSA key private key. SSH RSA key public key. And one more, SSH host key and host key. Normally, SSH DSA key and RSA key can be used for the protocol version 2 but ssh host key normally can be used for protocol version 1 okay let's just start ssh config here for the key authentications so here okay first here port number normally we'll use the port number 22 and here protocol version 2 ssh has two kinds of protocols protocol 2 and 1 but normally we uh, recommend to use protocol version 2 protocol version 1 has the weakness of the security okay if we want to host key here you can activate here and uh, for the authentication here okay okay this three right and one more thing here uh, if we want to permit the root login yes okay then let's just start again service city restart okay so for the testing uh, in the server okay here in my case okay I will use the tland login mkdr.ssh okay already ch mode 755 permission sh 
okay I am ready to use the username the tlet okay here uh, in my case in the client system I am at the root so here let's go here okay in my case I will delete all the keys previous key okay here at first at first right to make a key minus t r s c my double size is 1024 okay the key name will be id and the rsa and the past parts 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay now i made rsa this is a private key and rsa private is a public key one more thing here let's try to DSS. Oh, I'm sorry. D S A minus B. Okay, D B pass bars one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now I made two kinds of keys. So here DS is ID under DSA and ID under RSA is a private key. DSA pop identify is a public key. So try to read first RSA. Okay, so here RSA private key and this is a key. And uh, one more RSA public key. Okay, this is a using RSA and here you can find the username and host name together. DSA is the same. Okay, then here let's the copy ID RSA pop username tland hostname uh, no no server and the uh, directory on the bar keys. Okay, yes, and the password one two three four. Um, machine till end one two three four okay I'm successful so now try to access till end server so here can you find it's a RSA I the RSA is uh, my the private key so normally RSA we call it uh, a symmetric encryption system Asymmetric encryption system means that there are two keys to, to support the service and the one key will be used for the encryption and the other key will be for only the decryption. So in my case now, I didn't want to say private key. So my public key used for encryption and my ID address is a private key so it will be used for the decryption. So in my case, one, two, three, four, five, six okay i'm successful to log in using public key one more thing okay one more thing uh okay let's just try to use uh kind of things uh, okay try to use dsa okay scp id dsa path uh, username tland host name server and directory name ssh ath or i z in the bar keys key name so now request my the public private key of rsa one two three four five six okay i'm successful so now try to again ssh tland server Okay, now can you find DSA private key? Okay, password 123456. Okay, I'm successfully login using my public key. Now, try to use SSH add SSH agent bash. Okay, SSH add minus R. No, no, add. So password one two three four five six. Okay, now 
I add these two keys, RSA and DSA. So let's check SSH add minus L. So there are two keys. Okay, using these two keys, let's try to access server again. SSH tlend uh, hostname server. Okay, now I'm successfully login using public key without any password because my key is saved in the memory. In this case, anytime I can log in using my uh, private key without any password. Okay, the next, next, the last step, SSH. One more thing. Okay, then the username tland and server. Okay, here I use uh, the option the 4v. 4v here. In this case, you can very fast. You can find this. I already told you about the SSH transfer protocol layers. So there are the four steps. At first, they will try to exchange the ID strings. So here, this is the ID string. ID string means normally is stand for the version numbers. So if they the finish the okay, I'm seeing. Then the try to okay, can you find this one? SSH2 message key X in it. So using this packet, sub and SSH sub and sub and client try to exchange the information of the algorithm. First one is a kind of DFLman. DFLman is a, the uh, normally can be used for the key exchange and uh, AES and AES, normally this one can be used for data encryption service and HMAC MD5, these kind of things normally can be used for the Mac. And the last one is compression. So if the, this one, the fini and the uh, sub, uh, sub and client will try to exchange this kind of information and after that they will the select. So using, okay, here, okay, one more thing, service, okay, here, message new keys. So now sub and client to decide the key. We call this key some master key. So then if they the finish this kind of the process, then try to for the authentications. So here now showing the public key GSAPI with uh, MIC and password. So GSAPI with me and my normally is uh, based on the coverers. So normally now at first the authentic uh, user authentication will be done based on public key. So using this kind of process now Oh, no, no, almost thing, and after that, they make a kind of the channel also. Okay, so far, I will, I will explain the step one and step two. And the next video, I will explain from the step three to step six. Thank you for watching this video.